In this video, we are quickly going to look at product moments of inertia and their relation to the principal axes. What is the product moment of inertia? Well, mathematically, the product moment of inertia is the integral of x times y times a differential area moment over an entire domain. So if we have an arbitrary cross section and we give it an xy coordinate frame, what we are really doing is looking at small area elements dA and multiplying that area by its y-coordinate and its x-coordinate. And we sum all of these areas over the entire domain. The principal axis is a particular axis where this product moment of inertia is equal to zero. So when does this occur? The product moment of inertia is zero when the summations actually sum to zero and you have to look at the multiplication of the x and y coordinates here because the areas da are always positive so if we look at x times y in a general coordinate system in our positive x positive y quadrant that product is positive in the positive x negative y that product is negative in the negative x negative y that product is positive and in the negative x positive y that product is negative so effectively what the product moment of inertia being equal to zero means is if we have a cross section the two positive uh, product the two quadrants where the product is positive balance out in terms of x times y times da with the two negative quadrants these areas need to balance each other but it's not just the area it's the area times their x and y coordinate this is automatically satisfied if the x or the y axis are symmetry axes and they pass through the centroid, which is a requirement for uh, placement of a of coordinate system within a cross section for our problems anyways. What about anti-symmetry axes? Well, it's easy to confuse uh, the fact that we have to balance what's happening in these uh, diagonal quadrants with each other that the anti-symmetry axes will also produce a product moment of inertia equal to zero if we take an anti-symmetric section here and rotate it so that our x and y axes are the anti-symmetry axes what we can actually see is that the centroid has to be located the areas balance each other in terms of our centroid calculation which is uh, the uh, x coordinate times da and the y coordinate times da but not x times y times da so we have to be careful that in this we have a lot of area in our in this particular example in our negative product quadrants but almost no area in the positives so it is actually not balancing itself out. So the anti-symmetry axis is not the principal axis. In fact, the principal axis will be rotated relative to the anti-symmetry axis. And I can visually show that here, where now we have an area in the positive quadrants. And the in this particular case, the y value is quite large. And that uh, area times its x and y quad, uh, coordinates has to balance the uh, areas in the negative uh, x and y product uh, quadrants. Now it's not that the areas are the same, you have to be careful, it's x times y times da, so it's the result of all of that, and so you typically have to calculate that mathematically, but this shows that the anti-symmetry axes are not actually um, the principal axes. And this is important because we use anti-symmetry axes a lot for things such as finding the centroid. It will be at an anti-symmetry axis. We will use it for shear centers that we will learn later on. So it's easy to confuse that it is, uh, you might uh, make the mistake that it is actually a principal axis when it actually is not.